In this video, we're going to look at using the force time graph and use it to find the kinetic energy. Do be uh, wary that it says an estimate because it's not going to be a very accurate value and I'll show you why later. So I'm sure you guys have seen that the kinetic energy is given by a half times mass times velocity squared. The mass is given as 46 grams, which we do have to convert. I think I'll zoom in a little. Actually, I'll zoom back out. But yeah, the mass is given in grams, so we're going to have to convert that to kilograms by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. How do we get the velocity from a force time graph? Well, the area under a force time graph gives you a variable called impulse. So that would be force multiplied by time. Impulse itself is equal to the change in momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. And as you can imagine, in an object's motion, its mass doesn't really change. So if there's a change in momentum, it's caused by change in velocity. So we can make force times time equal to mass times change in velocity because impulse is equal to change in momentum. Now, why is this all useful? It's useful because we can now use this equation to actually get the change in velocity. Once you get that change in velocity, you can use it in the kinetic energy equation. So the force multiplied by time is essentially the area under this graph here. And that's why this graph is given. Now, it is an estimate, the area under the graph, because there is a curved section. But what we're going to assume is that it's like a perfect triangle. And that's why, again, it's an estimate. Now, the base of the triangle is... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to remove that line that I drew. But it's a base of... Um, okay, there's a bit of a trick here because for, for that section there, it's 0. So we'll take it up to 16. 16 times 10 to the minus 3 because this is given in milliseconds and we want the time in seconds. The height of this triangle is, well, it's in kilonewtons and not only that, it's 0 0.6. So that's 600 newtons to, to use in calculation. So the force multiplied by the time will be the base times the height. So 16 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 600 all divided by 2. Again, because the area under the graph gives you the impulse, force times time. That's equal to the mass, which is 46 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by the change in velocity. What we can do from here is divide both sides by this 46 times 10 to the minus 3. So we have 46 times 10 to the minus 3 of the denominator on the left-hand side. And that will give you the change in velocity, actually. In this case, the change in velocity would be... Oh, sorry. I forgot to calculate this. So... 16... Okay, um, very sorry, but um, whatever that change in velocity is, that's what we use as the velocity here, um, because it's going from stationary to that velocity, if that makes sense, that, because otherwise it wouldn't change by that much. So once you have that velocity value, you multiply a half times the mass by that velocity value that you just found, all squared. I'm sorry, I just left my calculator upstairs, which is why I'm not doing it, but I did get the final answer, which is 250 joules. So you can just double check that you'll get to that, but hopefully the working out did make sense. Uh, do be sure to leave a like if the video helped and subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. If you have any tutoring inquiries, be sure to visit my website, www.excelleneducation.co.uk. It's on the first link in the description too.